Hi everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday with Robin and Terry. Um, it's a gorgeous day here in Houston. I, could, I wish everyone was here. It's going to be 80 today. Mm. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first five years, number six hit the stores on Wednesday, as well as Five Years Fire in the Sky, which collects the first five issues of the series and is $15.99. So go to your comic shop and pick it up. Or you can go to our website at abstractstudiocomics.com and order it. And I also want to let you know about our holiday shipping schedule as we get closer to Christmas week. All orders will be filled up to, up to and including Friday the 20th. Beginning the 21st, the studio will be closed until the 27th. So no orders will be filled during that time. So if you want to place an order for Christmas, you need to do it before Friday. Uh, but we will be checking emails in case there's a comic emergency out there. So, just I like that comic emergency. Yeah, keep that in mind. Okay. Okay, I'm already also I'm already working on the first couple of shows for 2020. Will be our first show will be C2E2 in February in Chicago. That's going to be pleasant weather. <laughs> and Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle in March. So we hope to see you at one of those shows. We're looking forward to getting started again. Okay, so that's all my announcements today. Are you ready for your first question, Mr. Moore? I am. It's just like school announcements over the PA. Exactly. I like it. Okay. Our first question is from our friend Tony Rodriguez in New York City. Hey, Tony. And he asks, will Terry ever consider drawing comics digitally? This has a couple of parts to it, so let's answer that one first. Will Terry ever consider drawing comics digitally? First off, Tony's a troublemaker. Um, yeah, I would actually, I, there, I have no excuse. I have an Apple computer and a Wacom tablet with a pen. I, I should be doing it. Um, I certainly have played with it, you know, because I have to Photoshop everything to put it together for the final print book. Uh, so I've certainly got on there and played with that pen and do cleanup and things like that. Um, I would have to learn brushes, how to control brushes so that I can get used to the new feel of plastic on plastic. But yeah, I, I would definitely give it a shot. And I certainly am envious of people who are able to work digitally and do such fast correcting and cut and paste, um, all those wonderful things that just speed the process up. Um, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot going for digital drawing. Um, do you think you can get the same expressive feeling out of the computer that you do out of pen and ink? Okay, that's a little tricky because if you think about it, um, I have the line weights vary so much on depending on the pen and the paper that I use. If you use a rough paper, uh, you can get a much wider variety of pen widths and uh, flow, opacity, and things like that. And I know I'm using Photoshop terms, but the tactile feel of working pen on paper is amazing. Um, and that's what I've learned how to do. But sure, I mean, if I got, it's just a matter of getting used to the brushes, right? Uh, get the right brush kit and um, learn how to use it. Um, I'm not afraid, I would try it. I, and I think the expressions, I, sure, certainly they would be there because that's, that's coming from the eye. You just, you know, I, I could make expressions in a huge parking lot with fruit if I had enough space to make it all work out and use fruit like pixels. It'd be ex looking for the expressions is in your mind and uh, whatever tool you use, you'll get it. Okay, I don't understand that fruit reference at all, but um, <laughs> so we'll move on. The second part of Tony's question is, has Terry tried to use any digital media? What do you mean, Tony? <laughs> yes, I do. I, you know, I, when I finish the paper art, um, I scan it, uh, and then I put that scan into Photoshop and uh, do corrections and clean it up, and then I make a TIFF, uh, a very high res TIFF, and I put those TIFF files into another program, uh, InDesign, Adobe InDesign. And I do the magazine layout. I call it magazine layout. 
but it's you know the book layout um, everything from the cover from cover to cover uh, so that whole process is on the on the Apple computer and then at the end I save it as a high, very high res PDF file uh, so that there's no layers what you see is what you get and it's ready for print and I just FTP that off to uh, the printer that we're using for the job so yeah once it's this part is paper everything else is digital so Tony's final comment mm -hmm. is hopefully Terry never goes the digital route my personal opinion Tony's very talkative. He is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm with you, Tony. I, you know, I, I like what I do, and I enjoy working with the paper. Um, if I ever feel like uh, digital is the right medium to use for what I'm trying to get, uh, I'll try it. But I'm getting the results I like off of uh, this old 20th century style. Okay. Yeah. So let's go on to our next question. Okay. And this person does not want their name mentioned, so we won't. I don't blame but them. They ask, how do you decide on the layout of your comic book page? I this is a good example, the one that I'm working on, and I don't know if I should hold it up and show you because spoilers. But I knew that at the very end, down here in the bottom right corner, as you read through the page that I would want to have a certain scene, uh, the scene that we've worked for for two pages. So I really, it starts over here and it ends over here, a two page sequence. And I, so I did the first panel and then I laid out the last panel. And then I figured out in my head, the scenes that would get me there, um, having the big key moments in time for maybe one pause, one pregnant, poignant pause before the, the big moment. Um, so I see the beginning and the end, and then I know about the beats in, the, in between. And so laying out the panels depends on the beats. How long did I want you to look at the scene in the middle, then beat, beat, and then pause for an exchange of dialogue, then say a key retort, visual punctuation. You know, I think like that. That's how it is. So um, it's kind of in, it, it's kind of putting your mind to paper. Really, you're trying to translate this obscure stuff in your head, um, these concepts, into this uh, tangible thing. You know, uh, probably no different than playing Tetris or any other game or puzzle or something like that. It's kind of like putting a puzzle on a jigsaw puzzle together. So, what makes you decide to do a splash page? or a page where it's just one pan, one big panel? There's two reasons why I would do a splash page. One of them, I rem the first thing I remember is the time that we saw uh, in Strangers in Paradise, we saw Darcy Parker and her brother uh, walking in alongside her pool. And I did a two page splash and the whole thing was just one huge uh, shot of the pool area. And that was just to show the grandeur of her. Uh, you mean the grandeur? Oh, is that how you say it in French? The grandeur of her pool and her estate. You know, she's very wealthy and, and uh, decadent. Uh, so I was trying to be decadent and flashy and show this, this setting. And in the middle of this great, big, huge, beautiful setting, she was saying terrible things. Uh, so the contrast was on purpose. Um, or there may be a time where, you know, Kachu is chasing somebody in a Jeep down in South America and she drives it off a cliff. That's something you want to pull back and see the scope of the, the fall and everything else. So you're, you're thinking of, I guess, like a cameraman or a director. You're thinking of, okay, at this point we want to pull back and see just how big this mess is or how beautiful this room is or how big that mansion is. Or if you're drawing hero comics, that's when the 12 on that side and the 12 on that side all attack each other, you know, uh, and it's just bodies everywhere. Okay, so I notice on these three pages you have on the board, mm -hmm. it's kind of divided into thirds. Is that typical for you? 
That's kind of me. Yeah, I set I settled on a. When I was doing Strangers Paradise, I, I, every page was totally different. When I started Echo, I wanted to do a template on purpose um, because everything was laid out to fee measurements. Um, but I kind of stayed with it in terms of the later books because it just seems to work well that I, if if I have this panel, this long page across the page panel here, that really turns out to be our usual uh, current uh, TV screen, movie screen mode. Um, so that's my panorama view, panorama view, TV box, TV box, TV box, TV box, TV box. Our, our iPhone, you know, I think of that as an iPhone. I don't want to show you so bad. But, you know, I'm switching between iPhone view, focus versus, you know, the, all that. Again, it's, it, it's that when you see the director doing that kind of stuff out in the field, he's trying to picture how he's going to frame the shot. The framing has a lot to do with what you're focusing on. Um, if you got a tight framing, it's because I don't want you looking at the background anymore. I want you just totally focused on this person and whatever they're saying might be important. Um, or if I need you to get the scope of the room, you back off to the wide shot. Okay, so in this book, hmm. uh, I know you're about to finish it, mm -hmm. but I want you to do a page that isn't three, isn't divided in thirds. Just shake things up a little bit. Why, why in the world would you want to do that? I mean, you're scaring me. I've got one here. That's in. That's all thirds. Oh, it wasn't thirds. Okay, so. Um, Here's a four. So you do have some, but it's not all Here's thirds. Here's a two. Okay, okay. Well, just check it. I do. I, I have don't some. want it to be so rigid. Oh, um, I've never been accused of being rigid before. Okay, so do you have anything to add? No. But um, I sure love drawing comics, and uh, I encourage everybody to give it a shot. Just draw it for fun. Uh, just scribble anything at home in your notebooks or on loose paper. It's fun. Try it. So we'll see you guys next week. Bye.